Jean and I are so excited to be here today for the Art of Production Design Oscar panel, sponsored by Variety. The Art of Production Design is a dual-sponsored event from the Art Directors Guild and the Set Decorator Society of America, celebrating the teams in the production design category at this year's Academy Awards. We'll be speaking to set decorators today from all of the nominated films, and let's go! We're here with Anthony Carlino, set decorator for the film Babylon. Welcome, Anthony. It's nice Welcome. for you to be here. Thank Thanks. you. Yes, Anthony, this must be an incredibly exciting time. Babylon won at BAFTA. They won Critics' Choice. They won their category at ADG, nominated for the Oscar. How has this experience been for you? Well, it's kind of surreal. Like, I still can't believe it. Um, exciting. I'm sure in like a week when it's all over that uh, maybe... Like, I'll feel it, but for right now, it's just been a, a crazy ride that is real surreal. So, right. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you were a lead man previously, yeah. which is a very organized job. Did that help you in pulling together these fever dream fantasy sets that uh, for the film? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I moved up in set decorating, so I, I, I was a set dresser and the lead man. I was an on-set dresser now a decorator, so I kind of know all the jobs, which I think helps, um, and yeah, Babylon had to be really organized, there was, I don't know, like 125, 150 sets, so I kind of just had a really good group of buyers with me, I'd give each one of them a set, and they would just handle that set, and once they were done with that set, then they would move on to another set, so just kind of a checkerboard thing that was going on, which I couldn't have done it without them. Like they, by the time I showed up on the set and we had picked everything out, done boards, the guys dress it in, it was like 85% by the time I would show up. So I could just, and then on to the next one because there were so many. So without that, without the, the group that I had, it would have been a lot harder. Wonderful. That, that's a, that, a collaboration is what filmmaking is all about. Thank you so much for yeah, joining yeah. us, Anthony. And thank you so much for the interview that you did with Florencia Martin, production yeah. designer, um, and Gino Sardina, yeah. and that's on setdecor.com. Thank you and good luck. Have yeah, a great yeah, yeah. time. Good luck to you. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Gene and Joanne here with Vanessa Cole, set decorator for Avatar, The Way of Water, nominated for the Academy Award this year. Joanne? Vanessa. Thank you for joining us today, and I wanted to talk to you about the epic film Avatar Way of Water, as Jean mentioned. How do you approach a movie that was all CGI? Um, well, it wasn't all CGI. I was brought on for the live action sets, and also we shot elements for the visual effects. So they're sort of smaller, smaller um, pieces of sets where um, our human actors are interacting with surfaces or other digital characters. But predominantly my role was any of the hard surface sets or vehicles where we had um, real, real people doing real things. <laughs> and how long did it take you to shoot this film? Okay, so live action took place. I started um, my prep in 2018 and we started the main unit shoot in May 2019. And we shot for most of that year, and then we had a hi hiatus for COVID in 2020, like everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then we came back, and we've done two sets of um, second unit blocks of shooting. So I finished in 2021. Wow. <laughs> Is there any one particular set that inspired you, or that you that really spoke to you as a decorator? Um, probably the one um, I had fun with and I know my team enjoyed dressing would have been the High Camp Biolab, um, right. which is um, a very layered set. It changes throughout the course of um, Film 2 and Film 3. Um, and it's also probably the most challenging dress in that while we were shooting it, we were taking walls out and doing full dressing resets <laughs> while while main unit was still around the set. So a lot of coordination and um, a lot of skilled people were involved to pull that off. It's oh, so in terms of our set dressing for the bio lab, um, it was probably one of the most human sets. It had um, the most personality in terms of 
human clutter, but also as a workspace, as a laboratory, we had a lot of equipment in there. And for the fans, a lot of the legacy one items like the link beds and the amnio tank. That's wonderful, and it is uh, it is um, interesting to know that even in a, a, a CGI situation, that there is much set decoration involved, um, and uh, that's really exciting. And you've done two, you've done two, and then three at the same time. Yes. Well, becoming so we shot uh, the two sequels, so film two and film three back to back, and we have a small amount of film three um, second unit to complete before I believe that film de delivers at the end of next year. And um, I think a lot of misconceptions about Avatar is that it is all CGI. Right. And although that does transform the way set decorators do their job, we also provide a lot of reference dressing for visual effects. So while that dressing may not end up in the, the final film, it becomes really valuable, if not a central reference for the artists who work in post-production. Right, right, and and that's so important to to reinforce because I don't think a lot of people understand that the that that level that's in there. Yes. It's exciting, and I'm so glad you're here to explain that to us. Thank you so much. No. I've seen the film, I've loved it so much, and there's a wonderful humanity that goes all the way through yeah. it, and you really get immersed into the yeah. film. So thank you so much. Oh, I no. enjoyed it. I hope that it all pulls at your heartstrings because it is it is a great story and um, and it continues next year. So you'll get I'm to looking forward to that. So you'll get to see what happens to all your favourite characters and um, it's been a pleasure being here today. Thank you. We're here with Bev Dunn, SDSA, nominated for her work on the film Elvis. Welcome, Bev. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Bev. Uh, Bev, along with production designers Catherine Martin and Karen Murphy, are nominated this year for the Oscars and have had some pretty resounding success uh, throughout this awards season. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Can you tell us how do you honor the king of rock and roll, building it from the ground up uh, in the Australian outback? How does that happen? Well, it's a bit of a feat within itself, obviously, but it, it's, it, it was... It's lovely to be nominated in this whole award season by our peers because they recognise that we did it well. So I'm very, very pleased in that fact that um, there were many challenges, but we, um, we did it well. And you, uh, you have previously won the, the statuette for The Great Gatsby with Catherine Martin. Um, how is this experience, uh, is this experience different? Is it... Is it, you know, I'm sure it's not just some old, some old, you know. No, it is, it is different. And I actually said to my husband um, a few years ago, it's like, wouldn't it be great to be nominated for another Oscar just so I could go back and enjoy the experience? Because I was like a deer in the headlights. It was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And, and not coming, not being from L.A. But I've only had limited trips to, to L.A. That it was such an eye-opener and such a wonderful experience the first time. But now, I, the second time... I feel like I can just enjoy it. Wonderful. It's yes, really, that is fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. 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 And I just want to say, too, that the film is just astounding. I mean, da down to the, to the red bus, you know, everything, everything is just, like, uh, eye candy, visually stunning. And that's, that's the beauty of a Baz Luhrmann film and being able to work with Baz and CM is that they really do use the sets as part of their visual storytelling. And it's a privilege to work with people who, who, who want to, we just don't end up on the cutting room floor. So it's, it, they're, they're always used, so it's just wonderful, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank Congratulations you. to you. I hope you have a great time at the ceremony. Thank you. And, uh, and, and the same, of course, to uh, Catherine and Karen as well. They're a great time to be had by all. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. Thank you. We are so delighted to have Ernestine Hipper, set decorator for All Quiet on the Western Front. Welcome, Ernestine. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Ernestine. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front is just an extraordinary film, um, and you've been nominated here for the Oscar at BAFTA. There's been accolades all year long. Uh, tell us about this whole experience. I mean, this experience is absolutely overwhelming. It's, you come here, first of all, you meet all of, I, I, I was able to meet most of my idols or yet. I was able to meet new people, incredible colleagues, you know, set decorators that I've been admiring and production designers that I've been admiring. And I'm so grateful to be here and, you know, Netflix actually, they had to 
know, bring us to the BAFTAs and now they brought us over here and I'm, you know, all I can say it's been an incredible experience so far. Wonderful, wonderful. It, uh, all Quiet on the Western Front is also nominated for Best Picture, but I don't think everybody knows that Ernestine was the set decorator on another Best Picture nominee with Tar, uh, with production designer Marco Bittner Roser. Um, so you've got two films as the um, in the Best Picture category. Well, after All Quiet, I sort of I was sitting in Spain and I was, you know, I was I needed a vacation because that was a physically very very hard movie. And of course, then you get a call and then it says, ah, oh, there's a movie out there with Todd Field and Kate Blanchett, and you go like. <laughs> no, I can't turn that down. You simply can't. And then I packed up and went straight to work. <laughs> and now, uh, you know, thank you for giving me the award with Jan, with Jan together, because she's my idol. So I'm really, really honored <laughs> that we both have, you know, the award. Thank you. <laughs> Ernestine is mentioning uh, winning the SDSA award for film, for contemporary film, for the film Tar, uh, and tying with Jan Pascal, uh, for that award. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front nominated for Best Production Design, Ernestine Hipper, SDSA Set Decorator, Christian Goldbeck, Production Designer. Congratulations and, and good luck to you. Thank you. Have Thank a you. wonderful time. Yes, I'm Enjoy. Thank you. And for more information on this astonishing film, just check out setdecor.com. Thank you. Jean Kane and Joanne Vara here with set decorator Karen O'Hara, SDSA, nominated along with Rick Carter for the film The Fablemans. Karen, the, uh, the film was such a personal journey for uh, Steven Spielberg based on his childhood memories and it really became a family affair. Can you discuss the process of, of set decorating with that? Um, yeah, Stephen was um, ready, I think, to tell this story, uh, and he invited um, his three sisters, uh, Anne, uh, Sue, and Nancy, um, to to the set, actually, to the Phoenix house before um, even he saw it. Um, and prior to that, he was, um, they were actually really generous in giving us a lot of uh, the family movies and um, uh, just as they were talking, you know, some of their memories of of, uh, of their childhood, growing up together and they bounced ideas off of each other. You know how one child's memory is a little different than another child's, right? Sure. You know, I'm sure. one of seven, so all wow. one of my brothers and sisters are have different, you know, memories of our childhood. So that was really wonderful to uh, to and generous of them to share that and uh, somebody remembered their mother's dishes and somebody remembered the paintings and you know where they were and so it was really um, instrumental in trying to make it feel uh, true. Well there are so many wonderful sets and different locations throughout this film. One that jumped out at me just as a, a viewer was the camera store and I, I read that Steven Spielberg wanted everything to be practical. Mm -hmm. How did you approach that because it really is a beautiful, beautiful set? Well that is a store that still exists. Um, two brothers had um, inherited it, you know, it came down through the family, their father ran it. Uh, they still, it's still open. Uh, but a lot of what they carry in it is uh, at the moment now is not um, is more contemporary. So, but they have kind of stashed away a lot of the older stuff. So we were able to um, call from theirs, and then I have a um, uh, the assistant decorator Wendy Weaver. She really, uh, she and I both grew up during this time, and so we remember all those, and we did a lot of research. We had great help with that researching, and we were able to pull together a lot of the products from the time and the cameras, and um, Stephen uh, wanted his, the cameras that he had purchased, uh, the editing equipment that he had purchased. Um, that's part of, um, his process of becoming a filmmaker at that young age. So we were able to get online, um, you know, eBay and Etsy and all those things. We were able to pull that all together and create that whole store in a store that's really still rings true from that time period, the architecture Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. It's a beautifully nuanced film. Is there any specific set or any specific piece that jumps out at you that you really loved? 
in particular? Not really. I don't think there's any one thing. I think for me, the whole um, experience of uh, working so collaboratively with Rick and mm -hmm. Uh, and um, the family to try and create something that was real um, uh, and that uh, felt right. Uh, that's uh, a treasure that I'll always have. For and sure. I was really fortunate and I had an amazing crew and support. I mean, it takes a village and it really, it For took sure. a, a lot of people to pull all those homes and stores and things together. Yes. And and speaking of experience, uh, you have won the Academy Award previously for Alice in Wonderland, been nominated twice before, uh, twice as well. Uh, how does this different? How is this um, one different than the others? Or how how is this experience? Um, well. I invited my children. I got tickets for my kids, so they're coming. They're adults, but uh, they're coming. That's the most exciting thing. Um, just, I guess, you know, after you do it for a, a while, um, this, this work, you just realize more uh, the help that you and the people that you surround yourself with and the help that they give you and the support. Um, I think more and more I just realize how lucky as artists we all collaborate. It's, it's really, uh, for me, that's what I, um, I take from, from this particular point in my life is how much uh, I've been lucky to have mentors uh, ahead and I'm, uh, I've been really just very fortunate in that way. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you and Rick Carter are both amazing artists, and, and uh, what, a, what a collaboration on this film. This film is beautifully nuanced, and congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. tomorrow. Have a great time, and thank you again for talking to us. Thanks thank so you. Much. Thank, thank you, you, Karen. There's a wonderful uh, Inside the Set with Set Decor and article featuring Karen, Rick, and the Fablemans. Check it out on setdecor.com. Thank you again.